Roll the window down. Roll the window down. No, I can't resist. Roll the window down. Roll the window down. I ain't resist at all. He just slapped me on my head and put his knee in my knee me in my face. And you think it's funny? All right, suck my gay bitch. Cause he really did that. My nigga on my mother. I ain't do shit. I ain't even resist. I'm gonna resist these. They get you are sitting back there smiling. How come I resist against these two big ass cops? The nigga, he got mad because I said something and then he gotta slam me. He slammed me from over here, all the way over there, jump, put his knee in my face, my arm my neck. I said I can't breathe. And he said, then he threatened to say he gonna me up and everything. I swear to God, everything I love. Did he or did he not? Then he said he gonna me up. And that's why I started wilding. Alright, I see. You didn't say that to you, No, not him. Not him. The one back there. No. I swear. Alright, now I'm lying. Now I'm lying. Why yo, come on, bro. You really gonna be Cop like that? Huh? Go ahead. You really gonna be a cop like that? He didn't do that? He didn't do that? So that's not what happened. I bet. I bet. I swear to God, on every time I walk, y'all ain't got no. Y'all ain't got no. Bitch, I ain't Bitch, I I'm gonna break this shit. I'm gonna break it. Cause you lying, bro. How you, how you gonna lie? I thought that was supposed to hear. I hope the community, my nigga. He slammed me and put his knee in my neck. He watched. And then you gonna pick me up by my hair? You gay as hell, my nigga. I'm gonna mother you get. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna kill all y'all. Watch. I'm gonna watch. Watch. I'm gonna, yo, watch. <laughs> Stop kicking, stop stressing, stop kicking me in the yeah. balls. Yeah, we'll stop kicking me in the balls. Go get Put me in a different car. Yo. He just punched me in my face, huh? Get shit down there. Yo, he just punched me in my face. That asshole just kicked me in the nuts. God, keep going in that. He won. I swear to God, he won. He punched me in my face. Yo, this is crazy, bro. He just punched me in my face. Get that trigger. I didn't do nothing. Umbrella, she's up, she's up. Oh, another level of shit you can't really understand. What is good, my people? We are live back again with another episode of the forecast. So, down in Fort Worth, Texas, a mother, Jacqueline Craig, and two of her daughters were forcefully arrested by Fort Worth PD. So let's see what led to this woman and these two girls being manhandled by this police officer. What's going on? Hey, what's going on? Okay, got a problem with these people here. Okay. As you see, the camera is throwing stuff here. Okay. You make all the big cuts out of the beach. As you see, this, they are going to be big. You want to start coming stuff in here. Okay. So what's going on with you? Uh, my daughter and son came home saying that this man grabbed him and choked him. I came around her and asked him, I said, why did you put your no, hands on my son? He said, that. oh, he threw some paper. I said, and, and I told him to pick it up. He said my son didn't pick it up. He defined him, so that's why he did it. Instead of following him home, he said, but y'all don't even live here. It doesn't matter where we live. You don't have the right to grab and choke nobody's son. That's not his wife. Okay. Nobody. So I have a problem with that. My son is seven years old. You don't have the right to grab him, choke him behind no paper that he threw. What you should have done, because we have been living here for years, so you know that my house is a door in between yours, you could have came to me. Don't put your hands on my son. Mm -hmm. well, why don't you teach your son not to litter? Uh, I didn't. He can't prove to me that my son let her. But it doesn't matter if he did or didn't. It doesn't give him the right to put his hands on it. Why not? Because he don't. You, you don't lie. What do you mean? I'm just asking. Because he don't. Hmm? He don't. He's, not his, He's not his parent. He's not his parent. Why are you not why are you the, the, um, Because why would you ask me? Um, why don't I teach him? You don't know what I teach him. Okay. And you don't. Whatever your kids don't mean that they go by your rules when they're not in Why your Why are you sight. yelling at me? If because you, keep, you just pissed me off telling me what I teach my kids and what keep, I don't. If you keep yelling at me, you're going to piss me off and I'm going to take you to jail. Okay. Okay. You're not. Okay. 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 You're under arrest. Get on the ground. Get on the ground now. Get on the ground. You're going to just arrest. You're going to jail. You're alive. Get on the ground now. On the ground now. Shut 
really don't love. I promise you that. I promise you that you don't love. Hey, bitch. Bitch. You don't love. Bitch, I'm glad, I'm glad I just went live. Bitch, you don't love. You don't love. What are you? Anybody who has to interfere, they're going to jail too. Get up. 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 Everything you just did is on live, bitch. Everything you motherfucking said is on live, bitch. I promise you. I promise you. Hey, stop fucking crying. You on the rest for You on the rest for interference. Yeah. Call interference. Get back. You're going to jail too. Get back. Get back. Everything is on live, bitch. Yeah. Everything is on live, bitch. Get the fucking car. Get in the car. Get in the car. Y'all started this. Get in now. Get in. Get in the car. Get in the car. Okay, me too. I just recorded everything, bitch. You a big ass bitch. You a bitch, nigga. I'm Jesus Christ, you a bitch. You a big ass bitch. And I just recorded every motherfucking thing. You a big ass bitch. Get in the car. Get in the car. You got me fucked up, you a big ass bitch. And I recorded every motherfucking thing you just did. When you kicked up, bitch, it was recorded. Okay, you're going to jail too. I don't give a fuck. That phone is evident. No. Let go of the phone. He can't take my phone, Kenny. You, you touched it in. You're going to jail. He can't take my phone, Kenny. He can't take my phone, Kenny. Yes, I can. Let go of the phone. Tiffany, he can't take my phone. Hold on. The phone is a tip for you, people. Now, all of this started because Jacqueline Craig, the woman who was arrested, was the one who called the police in the first place. She called after her neighbor, Atalmar Vardy, grabbed her seven-year-old son by the neck. Now, Atalmar Vardy, who was an Israeli man, claimed that this seven-year-old boy threw a yellow piece of paper on his grass. And he said he repeatedly told him to pick it up, but he didn't. Now, this Israeli man claimed he thought the kid didn't understand what he was saying through his accent. So he put his hand on his shoulder and directed him towards the piece of paper, making him pick it up. Now this kid says he was just throwing some candy to his brother and it fell on his yard. And that he grabbed this seven-year-old boy by the neck and forced him down to pick it up. And the sister ran home to tell their mom what happened. So that's when the sister Jacqueline Craig called the police. So when Officer William Martin shows up, he approached the white man calm, peaceful, and polite. Then when he approaches the sister Jacqueline Craig, he's still kind of calm. And when she was explaining her side of the story, he said, well, why don't you teach your son not to litter? Now, they tell us all the time, violence is never the answer. Violence never solves anything. And when she starts explaining, that's no reason for him to put hands on a seven-year-old kid. Officer William Martin replied is, why not? This cop needs an explanation on why you shouldn't put your hands on a seven-year-old kid or anybody for littering. Then Officer William Martin says he's going to arrest this sister because she's yelling at him and pissing him off. Then when Jacqueline Craig's daughter tried to step in and calm the situation down, that's when the cop decides he's going to arrest her and both of the daughters. A protest tonight in Fort Worth over the arrest of a Fort Worth mom and her two daughters and how that played out on a viral video now being seen all across the country. Brandon Todd breaking that video down for us tonight, live from Fort Worth. Brandon. 
Yeah, Steve, uh, we're going to show you parts of that video. We're also going to talk about the uh, family's reaction. That family tonight calling for that officer in the video to be fired. And they are stating emphatically what happens in the video is racism. The incident happened Wednesday afternoon. Jacqueline Craig in the white shirt is seen trying to explain to a Fort Worth police officer that a man, one of her neighbors, had choked her son for littering. My son is seven years old. You don't have the right to grab him, choke him behind no paper that he do. What you should have done because we have been living here for years. So you know that my house is a door in between yours. You could have came to me. Don't put your hands on my son. Then things escalated when the officer appeared to begin criticizing Craig. Why don't you get your son up to The officer warns her if she continues to yell, he'll take her to jail. Then a daughter steps in to talk to her mom, and that's when it got chaotic. The video jumps to the officer putting Craig on the ground and handcuffing her. He then goes over to the daughter and puts handcuffs on her. All the while, those nearby were yelling and screaming. Craig, her 19-year-old daughter, and her 15-year-old daughter were arrested, charged with the resisting arrest. Craig was also charged with failure to identify. The 15-year-old charged with a misdemeanor. After spending the night in the Mansfield jail, they bonded out this afternoon. I'm very distraught because what I felt I was doing was actually protecting my child, and it didn't happen. It made me feel less of a parent that I couldn't protect him when he needed it. In a late news conference, Lee Merritt, Craig's attorney, demanded four things. We are looking for the, the charges levied against our clients to be dismissed. Craig's family also wants the man accused of choking her son arrested. The other two things involve the officer seen in the video. We want to see the officer responsible, Officer Martin. Uh, we would like to see him uh, immediately fired. And we would also like to see him prosecuted as well for his assault on the family. The Fort Worth Police Department issued a statement saying, in part, we ask that our investigators are given time and opportunity to thoroughly examine this incident and to submit their findings. We ask our community for patience and calm during this investigative process. In his closing statement, the attorney for the family remarked about the white officer, his client, who is black, and whether race is a For component example, in what happened. Went out there, you had two citizens out there, one who admitted to committing a crime. He said, I choked the kid because he defied me. And another one who simply said, my son was the victim of a crime. The difference between those two being citizens was one was white and the other was black. Uh, the white guy went home that night. My client just got out of jail recently. Uh, so the inference of racism is there, and unless they can offer a more plausible explanation uh, why this happened and why countless incidents of the, uh, uh, like, just like this happen all over the country, then we're going to call a spade a spade, and it's racism. Now that unidentified officer has not been placed on administrative leave. Instead, he has been placed on restrictive duty. The Fort Worth uh, police have issued an alert to its officers about a threat from a man who posted uh, uh, a video on Facebook. That man is known to police, and he threatens to kill white police officers in Fort Worth. Now, they charged Jacqueline Craig with resisting arrest, even though he was arresting her before she was resisting. And they charged her daughter was misdemeanors. Now, even with video evidence, and it clearly looks like it's racial bias, and even though they admit this cop broke policies, they still decided not to charge him or even fire him. His punishment was 10 days suspension without pay. And even then, he decided to fight and appeal that decision. But even after all that, the black police chief, Joe Fitzgerald, decided to put Officer William Martin right back on the streets where he was. Even then, the police union was still mad there was any punishment at all and wanted this black police chief fired for not letting this cop completely off the hook. Then someone from within the police department leaked the body camera footage. Then all of a sudden, Officer William Martin started crying about a fair, unbiased investigation into who leaked the body camera footage. And even though they said there was going to be no investigation into who leaked the footage, the police union demanded answers and they still investigated anyway. And they ended up punishing two black cops with no evidence 
just because body camera footage was leaked. More controversy involving Fort Worth police. A ranking member of the Fort Worth Police Department is slamming the chief. Vance Keys was a part of a large group of community leaders calling for the police chief to resign. And they say that Chief Joel Fitzgerald mishandled the investigation into the arrest of this mother and daughters in Fort Worth and the fallout that came in the months after that. News 8's Lauren Zakalik tonight live in Fort Worth with more on that story for us. Lauren? Yeah, John, certainly something to note here is that Jacqueline Craig, the woman you see in that video being physically handled by the white police officer, she stood by the side today of former Deputy Chief Vance Keys during a press conference. Now, in that press conference, members of the African American community warned that Fort Worth is currently a tinderbox of racial tension. Look at the evidence. Yeah. Pure nonsense. 17 year Fort Worth police veteran Vance Keys minced no words Monday. I'm not some backdoor dealing, double talking, sidestepping political puppet. I am a career public servant. Days after being demoted from deputy chief to captain for his alleged role in the leaking of this polarizing body cam video, he said publicly he had no role in the leak. If you have criminal charges, bring it on. The administrative charges are weak. I didn't do anything. I welcome any further inquiry into my activity. It was a similar message to that of his colleague, Abdul Pridgen, who was also demoted Friday. I will consult with my attorney, and I'm pretty sure they can expect a lawsuit. Monday, members of the African American community said the treatment of these men, as well as the treatment of Jacqueline Craig and her family, seen in the video, is the reason enough for Chief Joel Fitzgerald to be fired. He has failed to do his part in uniting this city. We are terribly divided. We are sitting on a powder keg due to explode at any moment. And the frustration in our communities are at an all-time high. Both of these men knew more than they disclosed to investigators. Fitzgerald spoke about the demotions Friday, but declined to respond to today's calls for him to leave. However, he did appear this morning on Good Morning Texas to promote a new initiative to increase communication in the city. We're changing the culture in the city of Fort Worth Police Department. And to be inclusive, truly inclusive, we have to commit to it. Keyes, who is currently suspended as part of his demotion, says he did nothing wrong, but he did leave us with this statement. If an agency runs their business properly, there should be no concern of leaks. I will say that. Now, these two black cops, with no evidence of them actually releasing any footage, received the most punishment in the police department. They were also suspended, but they were actually demoted. Now, the neighbor, Atal Marvardi, was eventually charged of a misdemeanor assault which is basically just a fine for putting his hands around a seven-year-old boy's neck. A lesser charge than the sister Jacqueline Craig got for resisting arrest when she called in the first place. The jury found a Fort Worth man guilty today for the way he tried to get a young boy to pick up trash. That incident sparked a confrontation between the boy's mother and police a year ago that led to a viral video and a civil rights lawsuit. Jason Allen is live in Fort Worth. And Jason, despite the guilty verdict, the man's attorney told you they're satisfied with the way this turned out. Satisfied, Gilma, because if he pays a fine and if he does community service, he will not end up with a conviction on his record. Of course, even that could still have an impact on a big civil rights case that is still pending against the city of Fort Worth. The case today, this was for Itamar Vardy. He testified in his own defense on the stand today that when he saw a young boy throw some trash down in front of his yard, he uh, tried to get him to pick it up and then put his hand on the boy's shoulder, he said, to get his attention. He thought it was over after that, and a neighbor testified Vardy later appeared stunned when the boy's mother, Jacqueline Craig, showed up. They both called police. Craig and her daughters were arrested, and the video of that whole incident went viral. Prosecutors, about a month after all that, filed a misdemeanor assault charge against Vardy, and today they convinced the jury that touching the boy was offensive and provocative. The judge, however, by offering a fine of community service, gave Vardy a way to avoid being convicted, something that Vardy's attorney said prosecutors had never offered. To this. No, nothing but said he could plead guilty, and, that's, and that wasn't his position. Okay. And we, may, you know, we, we appreciate and respected his position, and that's why we went before the jury and we took advantage of the jury system. Craig family attorney told me today that, that he sees this and the family sees this as the system uh, just giving Mr. Vardy uh, another way out. Uh, Mr. Vardy is still named in that federal civil rights case that is also pending against the city of Fort Worth.
Now, even though this man was convicted, Judge Neil McDonald still gave him an option for a way out. Even though all he was getting was a slap on the wrist, the judge still gave him an option to pay $570 in court fees, do 100 hours of community service, and six months probation, and they will take his conviction off his record completely. Now, at the end of the day, this woman and these two girls did more time than this man who actually committed the crime in the first place. This woman was the one who called the police. And this is why we need to have our own police. The black police officers that we have now are handpicked. They're not going to just let any black person into the police. They're going to let black people with a certain mentality and the same mindset that they have themselves. That's no different with our black leaders. They always appoint our black leaders. We need to start appointing our own black leaders. And these black cops will learn that it doesn't matter what you do. You will be the first one that they throw under the bus. They had no problem punishing these two black cops. But they defended this white cop to the death just for a 10-day suspension for what he did. And you don't see any feminist organizations coming out in support for this woman and these girls. You don't see the Me Too movement showing up to help them out. We need to stop trying to be accepted into their culture. They will never accept us into their culture, and we should never want to be in their culture. They call our deaths political because to them, it is nothing but politics. They call our deaths political because they always use us for political reasons. White women only come to black women for political reasons. They will let the black cop be the spokesman for a political reason. But you'll be the first one that will be thrown right under the bus. We got to realize we're all we got. And until we realize that, then nothing is going to change. We get a decision tonight concerning who will investigate the leaking of this controversial arrest video in Fort Worth. At this time, we are allowed to go into executive session. And Since December 21st, attorney Terry Daffron says life for her client has been rough. It has not been, been easy uh, for Officer Martin. It has been difficult for Officer Martin. There have been threats on his life, his safety. Cell phone video of his controversial arrest of Jacqueline Craig went viral. Last week, Craig's attorney released this Fort Worth police body cam of the arrest. That's why Daffron says that she filed this motion with the Civil Service Commission, claiming Officer Martin has, quote, lost all faith in the Fort Worth Police Department and asked the commission to conduct an investigation into who leaked the body cam video. Because the leak came from within the police department, that the police department is compromised in their ability to conduct a fair and impartial investigation. After 30 minutes of closed executive session, it was not the answer they wanted. We choose to allow the police department to conduct their investigation, and at the completion of that investigation, we may reconsider uh, the motion at that time. I have to simply say that I'm shocked by the actions that they took today and in not even hearing any arguments from Officer Martin. Officer Martin was suspended for 10 days, but many in the community have been demanding that he be fired. An internal affairs investigator looked into allegations that Officer Martin's behavior was based after on race. After reviewing weeks' worth of body camera video, detectives found that race had nothing to do with it. The same investigator says he was pressured by his chain of command to complete this investigation in an unusually short amount of time. The investigator says he felt someone in the police department was trying to influence the outcome of the internal affairs investigation. We were working almost around the clock, you know, very long days. We had personnel coming in on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. In that short time, we had gathered uh, what I considered to be a, a relatively large amount of evidence given the circumstances in this case. And there was no evidence to support the fact that Officer Martin had made any decision based upon their race. Now, after the internal affairs investigation wrapped up, Officer Martin was suspended without pay for 10 days, but not because of the arrest. The chief of police testified earlier this week he felt that Officer Martin was justified in making those arrests. He suspended him because of the use of force that he used while making those arrests, and the chief said that was his decision alone. 
Martin claimed the chief of police offered him a less severe punishment if he apologized to the Craig family on MLK Day, an offer Martin refused. Because they wanted it done on the holiday, and it, it seemed in poor taste, and it, I had, I had no, pro, no problem apologizing. It just seemed like it would be received as insincere. And that it, the the chief was looking for some way. My my opinion, I think the chief was what making some, looking for some way to make himself look better. Craig also spoke at the hearing today, saying Officer Martin failed to perform his duty as a cop and check on her son. It's it's not okay for your kids to be there, asking for help for somebody that took an oath to protect and serve, and you neglect your job duty. That's not okay. For an hour and a half, question after question came from the audience at Christ Assembly Church. If you had a seven-year-old grandson assaulted by an adult. It's raised some issues that we may or may not have been aware of. Community members pressing Mayor Betsy Price and Police Chief Fitzgerald about the viral video of a Fort Worth police officer. Chief Fitzgerald said Officer Martin's behavior was unacceptable. We set high expectations. But stood by the 10 day suspension, saying that the community could disagree on the level of discipline. And they did. We agreed when we started this to be respectful. No, that is not Some question reinstating the officer back into the community. Make him have to work even that much harder to repair a damaged relationship with that community. Many said they were pleased with the conversation, but it had an abrupt ending with members of the Craig family leaving after what they considered an offensive statement from the mayor. It's a slang term, and I apologize. I probably should not have said My kids are always saying, okay, it's a session. Are you listening, Mom? This should have been a session of healing. This should have been a session of unity. But guess what? She don't care. She don't care. This is a the mayor apologized and said she anticipates that this is the first of many meetings. I was trying to say in the context, I don't want this to be just that. I want this to be a constructive dialogue. Tonight, there's praise from pastors. There is outrage from fellow officers. It follows the firing of a Fort Worth police officer. It's all based on video of an arrest. Some of the video you see right here are Jason Allen on the story live in Fort Worth Forest tonight. Jason, we know police officers believe this in some ways is nothing more than a political move. And Doug, this is all happening around the one year anniversary of another use of force case here in Fort Worth. They got national attention. The officer in that case was not fired, and police officers don't believe that the officer in this case should be fired either. Video captured in August by a police officer's body camera shows Sergeant Kenneth Pierce grabbing a woman by the arm and hair and ordering another officer to taser. Because things like this happen, and don't nobody want to believe you. And if my kids had a got took, the truth would have never been been heard of, you know. The woman in the video, who we agreed to only identify as Dorche, had called 911 for help that morning after she felt threatened by a boyfriend. My boyfriend is trying to bust out the windows in my car, and he keeps trying to kick my door in. What's up, apartment number? But an attorney for Pierce, who was fired for the incident, focused today on that 911 call to explain his actions. And that's literally what the officers have to go on, is what the dispatcher puts in the call details. The detail sent to police said a woman had a knife that she refused to drop. The attorney also provided an opinion from a police training corporal that nothing in the video conflicted with Fort Worth's use of force policy. Local pastors today, though, who have been critical of the police department over the past year, commended the chief's decision to fire the sergeant. It is not beyond me to stand publicly and commend him for getting this situation right. And those pastors tonight also called on the mayor and city council members to publicly state their position on this case. Mayor's office said that uh, she was working on a statement that should come out sometime tonight.
A detective suspended for his Facebook post about David Joseph, a teenager shot and killed by an Austin police officer. It's yet another hit to the reputation and professionalism of the Austin Police Department. And it comes at a time when APD is very publicly trying to increase positive contacts with people in the community. KXAN crime reporter Leslie Rangel spoke with a friend of the Joseph family who calls the detective's behavior unbelievable. That's right, Shannon. She says it's indicative of a larger problem at APD of bias and racism. But those in the department do beg to differ. I know his mother. Like, are you kidding me? How would you feel if your child was killed and someone talks like that about your child, about your, your son, your daughter, your brother, your sister, your mom, your dad? Like, that was, so, that was a person. A passionate response from the co-founder of the Austin Justice Coalition to Facebook comments made by 17-year veteran of the Austin Police Department, Detective Jason Chiapardi. Someone lost their child, and that's all he could say. Austin Police say Chiapardi made comments through Facebook under a fake name on a story Cakes AN posted in in March about David Joseph. They read in part, quote, my family and friends are glad to hear that the high school dropout, drug using, neighborhood terrorizing, naked guy will never scare anybody else again. It goes back to the original thought of uh, there being a culture and there being a problem at APD. Incidents like this don't help do away with that mistrust, but I would just, you know, again, state that this is not reflective of the, uh, the beliefs nor the actions of the majority of this police department. Chia Party is also the secretary of the Austin Police Association. The APA president says Chia Party's comments are not okay, but he thinks a three-day suspension is too harsh. He said that under a fictitious name, he didn't have his uniform on, uh, he wasn't representing the police department, he wasn't representing the Austin Police Association, and I'm sure he regrets it. The APA president tells us Chia Party plans to appeal the suspension, saying the policy under which he was disciplined was too vague. And he just felt like the discipline was excessive compared to most uh, cases that go in front of the chief. And what did happen is he made comments that were in violation of the policy. We believe they were in violation, and we held him accountable for those statements per our policy. Now, we did look into the 2015 social media policy, which does not go into a lot of specifics on when officers can post when it's not official. However, just two months ago, the policy was updated, and it clearly states any speech, even if it's not official, that could compromise the professionalism of the department would be a violation. Now, late this afternoon, we did get a statement from David Joseph's mother, who says in part, quote, to hear such things said about my son is deeply hurtful. Even after they shot my son, I thought better of the police department. Shannon. There are other recent examples of Austin officers who are under scrutiny. The first came to light just last month. Video of an Austin officer restraining an elementary school teacher during a traffic stop made headlines. But it was comments made by another officer while transporting the woman that the chief called racist. The officer who made those comments is now under review. In 2014, dashboard camera video surfaced on YouTube where we hear two APD officers joking about rape. Go ahead, call the cops. They can't unrape you. turn your camera on. Senior officer Mark Lytle, an 11-year veteran of the department, was suspended for five days without pay. The other officer in the car with him, Michael Castillo, received a three-day suspension. Both were also required to go through sensitivity training. I have given nine years of my life to the Austin Police Department. I don't care if you like me. I don't care if you don't like me. If you like me, I don't really care. But I give a shit about our men and women. In August, the police chief had a big meeting with his command staff. It was a private conversation that he had with those 18 commanders. So a source actually got in touch with me, someone who was in that room and secretly recorded this conversation. And they wanted to share it with me to really kind of provide a different insight into what is happening behind the walls of the police department. 
if your heart is in this job, it's time to step out, either step down or step out before you, so you can leave with your integrity and maintain your integrity before we have to take action because I'm not opposed to taking action against the commander. You guys know that. And we are at a crossroads in American policing. And the problem is the cops. The problem is leadership. We are hearing from the police chief at a crucial time for policing, not only in the country, but here in Austin. And he actually talks about two of the department's most controversial use of force incidents that have happened this year. The most recent is the violent arrest of that Austin school teacher, Breon King, by a police officer, Brian Richter. The police chief is livid that that was not brought to his attention sooner. In fact, he learned about it when we started asking questions. So he's saying to his command staff, get with the program. And I am sickened that somehow people are still trying to justify Richter. Nobody wearing the stripes or bars or stars should even think about justifying a woman that the reason that woman got pulled out of that car is because she had the desk to tell him to hurry up. Had that been a pretty white girl in her Sunday best dress, I don't think that Richter would have responded. Acting the same exact way, I don't think Richter would have responded that way. She wasn't going with the program. Who gives a shit? You know what, millennials, ask questions. Get over it. That was such an easy stop to de-escalate. The second incident has to do with the shooting of David Joseph, who was a naked, unarmed teenager. And what we hear in this recording is the police chief expressing frustration that there are officers who do not support his decision to fire the police officer in this case, Jeffrey Freeman. You know, the union got all pissed off because I fired Freeman. Some of you might have got pissed off. I'm telling you right now, we have another Freeman tomorrow, guess what's gonna happen? I didn't lose a minute of sleep. If you can't handle a 19-year-old kid, broad daylight, naked, and your first instinct to come out with your gun, and your next instinct is to shoot the kid dead, you don't need to be a cop. I don't give a how nice you are. I talked to a number of law enforcement experts nationally who do warn that changing the culture of a department is really an uphill climb. That policing has been a profession that for decades has been steeped in the culture of protecting one another. The problem is leadership that lacks the intestinal fortitude to make the tough calls. Rather than just call it the way it should be called, they try to mitigate for the officer. They try to act like they're union rep. That is not our job. What's interesting is that I asked one expert exactly how you go about doing that, and they said it begins with a closed door meeting and a very honest conversation. And I think that's what we saw the police chief attempting to do. So I think over the next several months, you could see some of that leadership team continue to move toward his vision. But I also think that it is possible that we could see particularly high ranking officers retiring and maybe moving on to other jobs. I think the biggest takeaway is the police chief himself. You know, we see him moving in the public, speaking in the public in one way. And while his message was consistent, this is more of an unvarnished look at the police chief and a very disappointed and unhappy police chief. If you're not willing to do the heavy lifting, check out because you will not survive. All right, and we back on the forecast. So in Milwaukee, a mentally ill homeless brother, Dontre Hamilton, was shot 14 times by Milwaukee police. Now let's go back and see what got this mentally ill homeless brother shot 14 times by police. New radio calls from Officer Manny show the dramatic moments immediately following that shooting. Steve Shamraz is here in the studio with the audio. Steve. Mike and Carol, as Tom just said, there were no cameras that captured the shooting of Dontre Hamilton or the moments immediately after. But we can hear the radio calls made by Officer Chris Manny. Those calls made as soon as Manny stopped shooting. And the emotion in those calls is very plain to hear. 1246, 1246, shots fired, shots fired, officer involved. Guy started beating me, started beating me, guy with my bat, and he was gonna hit me in the head with my own bat and shots fired. Uh, Starbucks, Starbucks, help right now. 
Uh, give me medical too, he's gonna need medical shot. Multiple times to the chest. Black male, he's about 20. Starbucks at Kilborn and Water, I need medical. Witness testimony describes a scuffle between Manny and Hamilton, with Hamilton striking the officer at least once with his police baton. In the moments after the shooting, though, Manny was confused about whether he was even hit. 1246, I don't even know if I was hit. It was close combat. I need an officer to help me. 1246, I may have been hit with a baton, but I'm okay. I'm off the air now. Officer Manny was fired in October for his decision to stop and frisk Dontre Hamilton. It broke with department policy. He's appealing that decision, but may seek a duty disability retirement from the force. Sources have said Manny suffers emotional distress as a result of Hamilton's death. Now, this brother, Dontre Hamilton, who was diagnosed with schizophrenia, was minding his own business, just sleeping on the park bench downtown. So a Starbucks employee called the police to complain about him. But the call was classified as a welfare check. So basically, they got a call to make sure that somebody was all right, and they ended up killing him. Now, a death sergeant decided to call Officer Christopher Manny to go check on the situation. But Officer Manny was busy at the time with another call, so he left him a voicemail. So two other cops ended up responding to the call. They got the brother up. He showed him his ID. He said he was okay and just wanted to take a nap. And since he wasn't doing anything wrong, all they could do was just leave. So then the Starbucks employee calls back and the same two officers come back and told the Starbucks employees that they couldn't do anything because he wasn't doing anything wrong and they left again. So then an hour and a half after the original call, Officer Christopher Manny finally decides to check his voicemail and responds to the call 90 minutes after the fact. Not knowing that two other cops had already came and left because they realized there was nothing he can do and he wasn't doing anything wrong. Now when Officer Christopher Manny gets there, he sees him laying down, he gets him up and immediately starts frisking him. Then he claimed all of a sudden out of nowhere, Dontre Hamilton started resisting. He said this brother tried to punch him but he blocked it and hit him on the chin with the open palm. Then he says this mentally ill brother punched him in the face and took his baton and started beating him with his baton. Now the witnesses say that this cop hit him with the baton one or more times and that this brother Dontre Hamilton got the baton and hit him back with it. That's when this cop says he feared for his life and was left with no other choice but to shoot him 14 times. But the autopsy the family released contradicted some of the cop's story. New information tonight on the controversial officer-involved shooting at Red Arrow Park. Dontre Hamilton's family lawyer is raising new questions about the number of deadly shots fired and where Dontre was hit. Dontre Hamilton's family has known for months he was shot 14 times by Officer Christopher Manny. The family's lawyer is releasing portions of the autopsy out of the family's frustration with waiting for the district attorney to make a decision on charges. Seven months is an awful long time for them to wait. Attorney John Saffron says the autopsy shows all but one of the 14 bullets entered from the front. Seven traveled in a downward direction. It seems unusual that all those shots would be in a downward direction. Uh, that combined with the fact that there was at least one shot and one bullet that ended up in Dontre's back. Initial reports indicate Manny and Hamilton struggled with the officer's baton during a pat down. Manny claimed Hamilton grabbed it and hit the officer. The family says pictures of Manny don't show any injuries. The Hamilton lawyer says the autopsy shows Dontre suffered blunt force injuries to his head and face. No drugs or alcohol in his system and no gun residue on his hand. Saffron also believes the shooting was not close range. It begs the question as to if Christopher Manny was some distance away, why he needed to shoot and why he needed to shoot 14 times. Now, Milwaukee Police Chief Ed Flynn fired Officer Manny. The department referred any comment on the autopsy to the medical examiner's office, which had no comment tonight. Now, Officer Christopher Manny claimed that when he fired, it didn't have any effect on Dontre Hamilton. So he continued firing while walking backwards. He said he perceived a threat until he was completely on the ground. But witnesses say he was still shooting while he was on the ground. He didn't have any injuries. Half of the shots he was aiming down, and one of the shots even hit him in the back. Now, eventually, the police chief, Edward Flynn, 
fired him because he recognized that this brother was mentally ill, but he ignored policy. He violated this brother's civil rights and frisked him like he was a criminal. Right now at 10, the Milwaukee police officer who shot Dontre Hamilton 14 times at Red Arrow Park has been fired. Chief Ed Flynn says Officer Christopher Manny made an error in judgment when he patted down Dontre Hamilton last April. Hamilton's family is pleased with today's firing, but they still want criminal charges against the officer. We have team coverage. Charles Benson talked to the Hamilton family. But we begin with Katie Crowther, who has more on Chief Flynn's comments. Katie. Carol and Mike, Chief Flynn says by not following proper police training and protocol, Officer Christopher Manny put himself in a position where he had to use deadly force, and now he must be held accountable. It was April 30th in Red Arrow Park, where Officer Christopher Manny came into contact with 31-year-old Dontre Hamilton, who was known to be mentally ill. When you are approaching a mentally ill person who is not being engaged in violent behavior or criminal behavior, there's a set of trainings and approaches that you are taught. And you don't go hands on and start frisking somebody only because they appear to be mentally ill. That's what Chief Flynn says Officer Manny did. A pat down mistake that led to a violent confrontation and the use of deadly force. We went to Officer Manny's home to try and get comment from him. There are some accusations that Flynn's decision to fire Officer Manny is politically motivated, a claim he denies. This is my decision, my decision alone, based on the facts of this case and our responsibility to hold ourselves accountable. And anybody else who says something else is doing their own brand of politicking. There's already a Facebook page in support of Officer Manny and rumors that fellow officers will be taking action in protest of the chief's decision. There's certainly going to be a subset of police opinion that's going to say, hey, wait a minute. We had a copper who was fighting for his life, used deadly force, and you're firing him. Okay? I understand that. My inner cop is not dead. But Flynn says he has a responsibility to the department and city to make sure there are consequences for any officer's bad decision, especially when the outcome is deadly. Chief Flynn also acknowledged that Officer Manny is obviously going through a very difficult time and he should not be demonized. Now, of course, this cop was not charged. The DA, John Chrisom, said it's a tragedy, but based on the evidence, the force of use was justifiable. They called in a force of use expert from outside the department, Emmanuel Keppelshen, and he said the decision to fire was in line with his training. Now, even though he was not charged, even though they admitted he violated policies which led to somebody's death, the police association was still mad that he was fired at all. And of course, they had to defend this cop calling him getting fired politically motivated because to them, our death is nothing but politics. What we have to understand is that race to them is politics. When they call themselves white, it helps them put aside their tribal differences instead of calling themselves French, Dutch, Spanish, Russian, German, English and fighting amongst themselves. They call themselves white and are able to get on the same page when it comes to us. I know we're divided on even the names we should call ourselves, but they use whiteness as a way to unify and be on code with each other. And we could use black or whatever name we want to come up with to do the same, to put aside our tribalisms. They don't criminalize us because we call ourselves black. They criminalize us because it's a zillion dollar industry. They criminalized us before we knew anything about black or white. They criminalized us so they can sleep at night. It's not about what we call ourselves. It's about the mentality that we have, no matter what we call ourselves. If you have a nation and an army backing up whatever you say, then they have no other choice but to respect it. But until we can put aside those tribal differences, then none of that is going to happen. And we're going to keep getting casualties. At the end of the day, we are all we got.
Again, tonight's tragic shooting occurred while the chief was attending a volatile Fire and Police Commission meeting. Both Dontre Hamilton supporters and Milwaukee police officers showed up and shouts erupted. Charles Benson was there. Sounds like quite a scene, Charles. Yeah, Chief Flynn under attack from two opposing groups. Police union upset at him for firing Officer Christopher Manny. The officer who shot and killed Dontre Hamilton. Hamilton's supporters upset that the officer hasn't been arrested or charged. And all of this erupted inside here as the chief learned about the five year old being shot. Christopher Manny does not belong on the force. One by one, supporters of Dontre Hamilton's family. Why is Christopher Manny not locked up? Blasted Chief Flynn and fired officer Christopher Manny. The city of Milwaukee has no confidence in the Milwaukee Police Department. But when officers wearing We Stand Together shirts tried to speak, they were heckled and interrupted. I am also here to show support for Chris Manny. Oh! It went on for minutes with the Fire and Police Commission trying to bring control to the chaos. At one point, the crowd started yelling at Chief Lynn for looking at his cell phone until he explained why he was dealing with a five-year-old who had been shot. I'm sorry if you find this offensive. I'm keeping up in the developments of the shooting of a five-year-old. Right? It interrupted again when the police union president went after Chief Flynn for firing Officer Manny. Hamilton's family left without talking. I'm a lawyer taking all the questions tonight, our lawyer, our attorney. Chief Flynn praised his officers in the audience for being professional, but he had no patience for those who yelled at him for being on his phone. The fact is that the people out here, some of them, who had the most to say are absolutely MIA when it comes to the truth threats facing this community, and it gets a little tiresome, and when you start getting yelled at for reading the updates of the kid that gets shot, yeah, you take it personal, okay? Now, no offense, but I'm going up there now. So a lot of emotion, very tense situation here tonight. And outside of the shouting, nothing else was accomplished. And the chief and the police union and the Hamilton supporters still remain at odds. No confidence vote against Milwaukee Police Chief Ed Flynn was nearly unanimous. The police union says 99.3% of those who voted cast a no confidence vote. They're upset over the chief's firing of the officer who shot and killed Dontre Hamilton six months ago. Michelle Fiore is live with more on this story. Michelle. Carol Mike, Chief Flynn's calling the vote political. He says this is a time when the city needs to be healing over Red Arrow Park, and this isn't helping. In the meantime, the union has even more to say. The president of the Milwaukee Police Association says the verdict is in. We do not have confidence. The police officers' union has 1,600 members. Mike Cravello would not tell us how many voted yesterday, but claims 99.3% of the officers who did vote don't have confidence in the chief. If the chief cannot do the right things, if the chief cannot stand before the membership and lead them properly and give them the confidence that they, that they need and deserve to go out there so that they can protect, protect the community, then maybe it's time that he packs his bags. The MPA delivered sealed envelopes with the no confidence vote to the Common Council and the mayor's office this morning, where they were greeted by the mayor's chief of staff. As you know, the mayor has full confidence in the chief. I assume that. It's going to be a difference between us. The mayor released this written statement today, saying the MPA leadership is trying to stoke a political fire. I have complete confidence in Chief Flynn and the hardworking rank and file. A number of officers in this police department who are expressing support for one of their colleagues in a difficult moment. I understand that and I respect it. And we have a political leadership of the MPA that's making a political statement. So the no confidence vote has no direct effect on Chief Flynn's employment. The union, though, is hoping that this, though, makes their unhappiness known. A jury awards a half million dollars to a man stopped and stripped searched by Milwaukee police. 
This is the first of dozens of strip search lawsuits against Milwaukee police. And if the rest of them go this way, it could cost the city millions of dollars. Steve Shamraz is live with this breaking news tonight. Steve. Carol, Mike, it could be a lot of money, but this is about something much bigger here than money. The jury ruled police had no legal reason to stop and frisk a man on the streets of Milwaukee, though this jury says they had no issue with the alleged strip search that followed. To the man at the center of this first illegal stop and search case, the verdict is not about the half million dollars. It is about the message. That just because you look a different way or you drive a certain kind of car, that don't mean that you're doing illicit things. A federal jury found officers from Milwaukee Police District 5 had no legal reason to stop Hardy in March of 2012. The alleged strip search that happened after that stop, the jury said, was not illegal. But Hardy's lawyer says this was still a big victory. This is about the Milwaukee police terrorizing men of color in this community by stopping them and doing whatever the hell they please with them. Milwaukee police responded to the split verdict in a statement saying, today the jury found in favor of the officers in this case by determining the searches were lawful. I understand the city attorney's office may review the jury's finding relative to an unlawful stop and may consider appealing. More than 60 similar cases are still pending, and with a $500,000 verdict in the first one, Happened Mayor Barrett tonight did not want to think um, about the eventual I cost to the, the city. city. I think it's way too soon to even speculate on that. Um, we obviously don't want to see the, the taxpayers liable for a huge amount. At the same time, we want to make sure that the law is followed. The next trial here is set to begin September 8th. Attorney Robin Cello thinks the chances of an illegal strip search verdict in that case are stronger. The chapter, chapter six, is called The Night in Question. Mm -hmm. uh, and you write in the book, now picture this and keep in mind that this is Purely hypothetical. 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 Yes. Why don't you tell me what might have happened on the night of June 12th, 1994? <laughs> and let's just walk yeah. through the night. I, well, first of all, it's, this is very difficult for me to do this. Uh, it was very difficult for me because it's hypothetical. I know and I accept the fact that people are going to feel whatever way they're going to feel. <laughs> You know, uh, they're going to, uh, um, you know, some, uh, whatever, uh, whatever they want to feel. In the book, the hypothetical is... Uh, uh, Charlie uh, pulls out. Charlie <laughs> came by and mentioned something about what was going on at uh, her house. This guy, Charlie, shows up, the guy who I had recently become friends with, and uh, I don't know why you had been by Nicole's house, but it told me you wouldn't believe what's going on over there. And, uh, and I remember thinking, well, whatever's going over there has got to stop. She is Laura Hart McKinney, the writer who recorded conversations with Mark Furman. Anything out of a nigger's mouth for the first five or six senses is a lie. And she has remained mostly silent until now. Why have you decided to come forward now and talk to us? I trust you. Does it feel good to talk about this? Yes. It's time. All right, Ms. McKinney, would you come forward, please? There were bits of the puzzle that just I was unable to reveal uh, at the time. And I was unable to uh, be as truthful as I, as I really wanted to be. So she is telling her story, her truth, and for the first time, excerpts from the Furman tapes you've never heard. Vulgar. The white stain said, well, fight for Jew, color the wandering Jew. The plot white said, big nose. Sexist. How do you arrest a violent suspect? I yell out, have a man do it. Disturbing. You've got to be a borderline sociopath. You've got to be violent. Do you use the word nigger in describing people? Presently? Yeah. Oh, well. No, sir. Have you used that word in the past 10 years? Not that I recall, no. You mean if you called someone a nigger, you have forgotten it? I'm not sure I can answer that question the way you phrase it, sir. You have difficulty understanding the question. I'll rephrase yes. it. Yes. I want you to assume that perhaps at some time, since 1985 or 6, you addressed a member of the African-American race as a nigger. 
Is it possible that you have forgotten that act on your part? No, it's not possible. Are you therefore saying that you have not used that word in the past 10 years, Detective Furman? Yes, that's what I'm saying. And you say on your oath that you have not addressed any black person as a nigger or spoken about black people as niggers in the past 10 years, Detective Furman? That's what I'm saying, sir. So that anyone who comes to this court and quotes you as using that word in dealing with African Americans would be a liar, would they not, Detective Furman? Yes, they would. All of them, correct? All of them. All right. All right, and we back on the forecast. And I want to say RP to the brother Dante Hamilton. And I'm glad the sister Jacqueline Craig and her two daughters are alive and well and able to tell their stories about what happened. But right now we're at the point where we can't afford these tribal differences anymore. The gender wars. I can't understand how black women can be involved in the white woman feminist movement. And the same thing with black men with the white men's MGTOW movement. That ain't for us, because at the end of the day, they will put aside their gender differences for their whiteness. White men and women will argue all day, but when it comes down to us, they will be on the same page. We keep arguing about our names, what we call ourselves, our beliefs, religion, everything we can think of. The dominant society found a way to put aside their tribal differences and whiteness. They are able to put aside whatever differences they have to stay on code. And until we get on code, then there's nothing we can do about them harming our women, our children, our elders. They will never stop criminalizing us because they make so much money doing it. They control so many resources at our expense. Why would they stop? And until we can learn how to work together, practice group economics, do what we got to do, stop with all the petty differences, then none of this is going to stop. So, as always, man, we have got to start standing for something, or we're going to keep falling for anything. <laughs>